Explosions, rebellions, and a bird disappearing from a baseball stadium in a puff of feathers. These are unbelievable moments in history that were somehow caught on camera. On July 16, 1945, in the New Mexican desert, human history changed forever. On that day, the first nuclear explosion took place, known as the Trinity Test. Trinity was a culmination of several years of nuclear research from scientists at labs all around the country, which was collectively known as the Manhattan Project. The engineers and scientists working on the Manhattan Project created two different types of atomic bombs, one that used plutonium and one that used uranium-235. The Trinity Test was done with the plutonium-style bomb, which is the same type the Army later dropped over Nagasaki Japan known as Fat Man. The test was initiated at 5.30 a.m. and was done at an Air Force base in New Mexico. Nobody could have possibly prepared themselves for what they were going to see as a gigantic 40,000-foot mushroom cloud erupted before their eyes. Incredibly, the government had several different cameras running, and they actually captured the moment of detonation from a distance of roughly 5.6 miles away. Photographer Berlin Brixner said, I knew immediately that, that the explosion had exceeded the greatest expectations. The introduction of the nuclear age undoubtedly changed human history, and it's chilling to actually have the moment on camera. Less than a month later, the U.S. would drop the successfully tested plutonium atomic bomb on Nagasaki, killing tens of thousands of civilians, but eventually bringing an end to World War II. The Apollo 11 moon landing was nothing short of incredible. Looking back, it's hard to imagine that NASA was able to accomplish this feat in 1969, less than a decade after the Russians had pioneered manned spaceflight itself in 1961. Yet, on July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 spacecraft took off, hoping to fulfill President John Kennedy's pledge to put a man on the moon. Everything went well, and a few days later on July 20th, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed the lunar module on the moon, leaving Michael Collins behind in the command module. Aldrin and Armstrong's lunar module landed on the moon at about 4.15 p.m., and just over six hours later, Armstrong was ready to set foot on the surface. At 10.56 p.m., Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon. It was an incredible moment for people around the world, and was the product of literally thousands of different minds working together. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. If that was not amazing enough, NASA broadcast the moment live throughout the world, and it's estimated that about 650 million people watched it happen. It's one of the most significant pieces of modern history, and it's breathtaking to have on camera. The footage definitively shows the moon landing in all its glory, and when it aired, it electrified America and shocked the world. One of the most tragic events in recent memory was the Challenger disaster of January 28, 1986. 17 years after man had first set foot on the moon, NASA launched a Challenger in order to put into orbit a satellite to collect information on Halley's Comet. There were a total of seven astronauts on board, including Krista McAuliffe, a civilian high school teacher. McAuliffe was supposed to broadcast from space to inspire the millions of children back home to consider careers in science and technology. After several months of training, McAuliffe and the rest of the crew took off on a chilly January morning. Florida normally known for its subtropical weather, was subject to a cold spell prior to the launch, which left the launch pad icy and dangerous. This caused an O-ring to not fully seal during takeoff, which led to a leak that eventually caused the fuel tank to explode. The crew actually survived the explosion, but died from a lack of oxygen before crashing into the ocean. The event was broadcast live to the entire world, including the families of the astronauts, who watched in horror. The footage is still available and shows the destruction, as well as the initial confusion over what was happening. It was one of the most devastating moments in American history. Though it occurred nearly a century ago, the crash of the Hindenburg is still one of the most infamous disasters in modern history, in part because it was one of the first caught on film and broadcast on the radio. Even today, people still reference the Hindenburg to describe a big failure, but its real history has been forgotten by many people. Built in Nazi Germany in the mid-1930s, the Hindenburg was a dirigible, an airship named after Paul von Hindenburg, the former president of Germany who had appointed Adolf Hitler as chancellor. The Hindenburg took off from Frankfurt, Germany on May 3, 1937 and made it all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to Lakehurst, New Jersey, where it arrived three days later on May 6th. A veteran of transatlantic travel, the Hindenburg had crossed the ocean 34 times previously. However, this time, disaster struck when it tried to land and the airship burst into flames. In the destruction, 35 people lost their lives, which was just over half of the total people on board. In the footage, you can actually see survivors running away from the crash Zeppelin as it's bursting into flames. The disaster is tragic, and the carnage is almost indescribable. It's broken in flames now, and the the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass of the humanity. 
Long heralded as one of the most patriotic moments in American history, the raising of the U.S. flag during the Battle of Iwo Jima is truly an amazing spectacle to watch. Even though cameras were far from being widespread at the time and the battle was still going on, a few brave cameramen from the Marine Corps and Associated Press captured the moment on film. Joe Rosenthal with the AP took the now iconic photograph, and Sergeant William Homer Janoust of the Marines captured it on video. Janoust used a 16mm moving picture camera that used color film inside to record the moment, and it is remarkably clear considering the circumstances circumstances it was shot under. Though he was never given the recognition of Rosenthal, Janow's footage proved that Rosenthal's picture was authentic and not staged, a charge Rosenthal often had to defend against. Though it's brief, the video captures that very moment on February 23, 1945, when Marines Ira Hayes, Michael Strank, Harold Pike Keller, Harlan Block, Harold Schultz, and Franklin Soucy raised the flag on Mount Suribachi. Several of those Marines died during the battle, as did Janoust, who was killed just a few days after capturing the moment on film while inspecting a cave. Janoust was just 37 years old when he died, but his timeless footage will live on forever. The Second World War was one of the most destructive and horrible affairs in human history. Today, it is thought anywhere from 60 to 80 million people lost their lives, well over half of whom were civilians rather than soldiers. After beginning in 1939, the war ended six years later on September 2, 1945, when the Japanese finally and formally surrendered to the Allies. This followed the surrender of Germany months earlier and the dropping of two atomic bombs on Japan in August which killed over 100,000 people. As the bomb's creator, Robert J. Oppenheimer said, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. The official surrender took place on board the USS Missouri, which was stationed just inside Tokyo Bay, Japan. In the amazing footage, which was captured from the deck above where the proceedings were happening, you can clearly see the Japanese delegation standing on the deck, as well as the moments that members of the Japanese delegation actually signed the agreement. Following the Japanese signatures, the Allies all signed, starting with Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers General Douglas MacArthur. It's a truly stunning bit of history to watch, and it's even more incredible it was caught on camera and declassified for today. This is the exact moment when the bloodshed of the Second World War ended, a truly monumental moment for peace in recent human history. For many years, the Berlin Wall stood as a symbol of oppression for millions in a divided Germany. A product of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, the German Democratic Republic, also known as East Germany, began construction on the wall in August 1961. The wall would eventually grow from makeshift barbed wire into a full-fledged concrete barrier spanning 96 miles long. The GDR built the wall to stop the flow of East Germans fleeing into allied Western Berlin. Over the years, more than 170 people died trying to cross the Berlin border, while another 5,000 managed to sneak their way across in secret. Then, on November 9, 1989, following months of increasing pressure, the GDR announced the wall would be open again for free travel. This was an accidental misinterpretation of new travel regulations, but the effect was immediate. Thousands of people rushed to the gates, demanding the promised free passage, and the authorities finally had to relent. TV cameras from around the world captured what happened next, as thousands of Berliners flocked to the wall over the next few days, tearing it down and covering it with graffiti. It was shocking for the world to watch such debauchery and celebration on what was just hours earlier considered one of the most dangerous pieces of land in the world. Without the live broadcast, it would have been impossible to believe in the West, and the footage is still remarkable today. Even though they were two of the most important political leaders of the late 1950s, it's not often that you see pictures of former American Vice President Richard Nixon and the former Premier of the Soviet Union Nikita Khrushchev together. There's a pretty good reason for that, as the Cold War between the two countries was raging. Yet in 1959, they famously met each other in Moscow, and each took his chance at trying to embarrass the other. That year, the US and Soviet Union opened dueling attractions in each other's countries, which were supposed to show the virtues of capitalism versus communism. After the Soviets opened their exhibition in New York, York City, Nixon traveled to Moscow to take part in the opening of the American exhibit. Khrushchev was there to show Nixon around, but what started as a simple conversation between leaders soon flared into a heated debate among rivals. Incredibly, all of this was caught on film for posterity, and it is some wild footage. It almost looks like a comedy sketch, with Khrushchev trolling Nixon over America's alleged lack of progress, and Nixon retorting about the necessity of the free exchange of ideas. The conversation finally ended with an uncomfortably long handshake, followed by a very jovial hand slap from Khrushchev. It seems like an SNL skit, but it really happened. Whoever said being an astronaut was all work and no play obviously never met the crew of Apollo 16, or watched them race lunar vehicles on the moon. 
consisting of Command Module Pilot Thomas K. Mattingly II, Commander John W. Young, and Lunar Module Pilot Charles M. Duke Jr., the Apollo 16 space mission took off just prior to 1 p.m. on April 16, 1972. Among an assortment of other objectives, Young and Duke were supposed to engage in the Lunar Grand Prix, a test to find out the capabilities of the lunar roving vehicle, and not only did they engage in the Grand Prix, but they filmed the entire thing, and NASA later declassified it, allowing everyone to see. The footage is astonishing and hilarious at the same time. As Young zigzags around the moon, testing out the rover's handling, through the audio, you can hear Duke laughing and giggling as Young consistently rooster tails over the craters of the moon with Duke egging him on. It's a truly amazing piece of history and footage, and shows the lighter side of one of the most revolutionary space missions. Okay, turn sharp. <laughs> I have no desire to turn sharp. <laughs> On April 22, 1989, massive protests erupted in Beijing, China at Tiananmen Square. They were driven by the funeral of Hu Yaobang, a former Chinese Communist Party official. Hu had been ousted from the government while advocating for economic changes to help the poor, causing a lot of anger among his supporters. For the next month and a half following Hu's death, China was awash with protests, many of them centered at Tiananmen Square. The Chinese government met the protesters with violence, killing hundreds, and by June 5th, the government was completely in control of the area, threatening anyone who protested with death. Yet amid the eerie emptiness of the square, a single man appeared, looking like he was on his way to work just like any other day, until he stopped in front of a line of tanks, preventing them from going any further. He stood still as the tank driver at first was unsure of what to do, before running in front of the vehicle as the driver tried to maneuver around. With the sounds of machine guns in the background, the protester briefly jumped on a tank, before two government officials hastily took him away. The name and fate of the protester was never revealed by the government, leaving him to be known as Tank Man by most. His brave defiance and in the name of peace has made him a symbol of resistance ever since. Since the 1870s, there have been more than 236,000 professional baseball games played under the MLB banner, and on just 331 occasions has a pitcher thrown a complete game without allowing a hit. But while the accomplishment is impressive by itself, none are quite as unbelievable and inspiring as Jim Abbott's from his time as a member of the New York Yankees. That's because Abbott was born without a right hand. To field his position, Abbott would hold his glove with his right arm while pitching, and then he would quickly slip his left hand in after delivering the pitch. He was an extraordinarily complicated maneuver, but one Abbott made look graceful and easy. Being a one-handed baseball player is already an amazing feat, but making it to the big leagues and pitching a no-hitter is almost incomprehensible. Yet it happened on September 4, 1993, when he faced a potent Cleveland lineup that included future Hall of Famer Jim Thorne. Though he walked a few batters, he did not allow a hit, becoming one of just a special few pitchers to accomplish the feat. Luckily, the game was televised and the footage preserved, or else younger ballplayers might not even believe it happened. It still stands as one of baseball's most unforgettable moments. For more than 20 years, Randy Johnson was one of the most feared pitchers in MLB. With an electrifying fastball that could exceed 100 miles an hour and a huge 6-foot, 10-inch frame, Johnson was certainly intimidating on the mound. During his career, he faced more than 17,000 batters, yet his strangest moment came during a spring training exhibition game on March 24, 2001. As a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Johnson was pitching to Calvin Murray of the San Francisco Giants, but the ball never made it to home plate. Halfway there, it hit the unluckiest dove in history, which erupted into a puff of feathers. The dove only stayed in the air for a few seconds before hitting the ground, and the baseball continued until it hit the backstop. Afterward, everyone was completely stunned and unsure how to continue. The pitch ended up not counting, but the poor dove obviously lost its life. It's by far one of the most bizarre incidents to happen in an MLB game, and almost too crazy to believe without seeing. Even more incredible, the entire thing wasn't even supposed to be caught on camera. At that time, most spring training games were not filmed, and the only reason this was captured was due to the Diamondbacks video coordinator taping the game for coaching purposes. Fans of the film industry are undoubtedly familiar with Robert Paul, one of the earliest British filmmakers in history. Born in 1869 in London, Paul took the Thomas Edison-invented kinetoscope and legally patented it in London under his own name in 1895. However, after the Edison company stopped sending Paul films to play on the machine, he soon invented a camera to make his own. By the late 1890s, Paul was shooting hundreds of films to show on his projectors. Many of them captured what were ordinary aspects of life back then, including his 1898 film A Switchback Railway. The silent film shows kids riding and having fun on a very early and very primitive roller coaster. There are no loop-the-loops or huge drops, and the passengers had to get off halfway through and run to the other side to return, but the kids look like they're having a ton of fun. Comparing today's theme park rides with the footage, the roller coaster looks basic, but the fact that they had mechanized roller coasters at all in 1890s Britain is pretty surprising to today's viewers. Most people probably associate roller coasters with modern theme park, and it's almost startling to see one from such a long time ago. The footage is pretty clear and serves as a perfect reminder of the simplicity of the times back then. 
By the mid-1960s, the Beatles, who had started as a scrappy skiffle and rock and roll covers group in the bars of Liverpool and Hamburg at the start of the decade, were undoubtedly the biggest band in the world. Already maturing as artists, the songwriting abilities of John Lennon and Paul McCartney were becoming renowned, with the pair's compositions dominating the charts on records by a variety of artists on both sides of the Atlantic. And with the Fab Four making regular television appearances, world tours, and even blockbuster movies, Beatlemania had well and truly taken hold. And nothing encapsulates the hysteria of that era quite like the Beatles' August 1965 concert at New York's Shea Stadium, where they performed a wild set of their hits for 56,000 delirious fans. Famously, the crowd's screaming was so loud that they almost completely drowned out the music, but that didn't stop the performance from becoming legendary. It was even a transcendent experience for the hard-working and road-weathered Beatles, especially John Lennon who reportedly told friends that he saw the top of the mountain during the concert. Ringo Starr later recalled, I feel that on that show John cracked up. He went mad. Can you hear me? Though the Beatles returned to Shea Stadium the following year, increased security and organization meant that there was no replication of the concert that greeted the band on its venue debut. The Fab Four officially stopped touring in 1966 and only reunited for a private concert on the roof of the Apple Corps building in 1969, shortly before their split in 1970. There have been countless breakthroughs in the world of astronomy and space exploration in recent decades, but little compares to the successful deployment by NASA of Perseverance, the rover that landed on Mars in February 2021 after more than half a year's voyage through the solar system. On successfully completing the journey and making it to Mars intact, scientists praised what would become a new era of space exploration on the Red Planet. The famous grainy footage of astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landing on the moon in 1969 remains some of the most mind-boggling one could possibly watch even today. But the recent images that were beamed to Earth from Perseverance offered a hitherto unbelievable insight into the surface of Mars, with the vivid color of the red planet and the dustiness of its surface reminding viewers strikingly that humanity really has encountered another world. The rover is still operational, undertaking experiments as it explores the surface of Mars, with the intention of collecting samples that will one day be brought back to Earth for further study. On the afternoon of August 5, 2010, a mine near San Jose, Chile, experienced a cave-in that left 33 workers, including miners and subcontractors, trapped more than 2,000 feet below ground. Two days later, as local search and rescue crews set about trying to locate any survivors, a further collapse occurred, limiting the men's potential escape options. The group managed to attract a search probe by tapping the walls of the tunnel to attract attention. When the probe arrived, they attached a note telling those on the surface how many were there and their approximate location. The men were trapped for 17 days before making contact with rescuers, during which they miraculously managed to survive on two days' rations. In the months that followed, the plight of Los 33 became headline news around the world, with rescuers managing to supply the men with rations and equipment to keep them going as the arduous task of extracting them continued. Thankfully, the ordeal had a happy ending. As the world watched, all 33 miners were eventually rescued following an epic two-month attempt involving experts from across the world, including NASA scientists. Many of those rescued became celebrities in their home country and beyond though sadly, a number of them suffered long-lasting trauma as a result of their experiences. He hugged and kissed just about everyone, and then said of his ordeal, I met God, I met the devil, God won. The 2020 presidential election was one of the most brutal in American history, with the manner in which Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Joe Biden were facing off against each other taking the headlines of the day. However, nothing during the campaign compares to what came after, with the election becoming notorious for Trump's refusal to accept the result of the vote. But this unprecedented postscript, which would culminate with Trump supporters staging a deadly attack at the Capitol building in Washington on January 6, 2021, began with one of the most farcical political gaffes of all time. On November 7, 2020, Trump published a tweet stating that a press conference concerning the results of the election would take place at Four Seasons Philadelphia, which most people, Trump's team included, assumed meant the famous hotel. However, it soon became apparent that there had been a major mistake and that someone had accidentally booked Four Seasons Total Landscaping, a nondescript and otherwise anonymous business located between a sex shop and a crematorium. But rather than reschedule or cancel the event, Trump's allies pushed on. And so later that day came live broadcasts of former mayor of New York Rudy Giuliani, then working as Trump's attorney giving a bizarre press conference in front of a garden supply storage unit, outlining how the losing side planned to challenge the result of the vote. It was during this conference that Giuliani received confirmation that the election had been called for Biden, piling a final indignity on one of the most embarrassing moments in U.S. politics. And it wasn't great for the landscapers either. We had a lot of haters. You have 1,010 new messages. It created a lot of fear of what the future holds for Four Seasons Total Landscaping. 